Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you about a concept and a really cool pattern that I've seen, you know, arising a lot recently, which is the idea of using LLMs within a data pipeline to do the tasks that would you know, normally be delegated to an actual human or that you would actually have to write the logic for. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is how you can use Airflow to actually, you know, first just extract data from an open weather map API so you can follow us along at home and then use an LLM call, Pydantic OpenAI, uh, to understand the data structure, then also to do data cleaning, transformation, validate that that data cleaning was successful, and then again, use an LLM for analysis and insights generation. So instead of you needing to, you know, define all logic to uncover insights, you can have an LLM do it. Um, so the goal here is, you know, really automating a lot of the more complex logic that you would typically have to design and instead leave that to AI, uh, LLMs, or you can even integrate AI agents. So I'm going to show you how you use Pydantic here, but which is an AI agent provider as well, um, so that you can use AI to its fullest uh, in actual production workloads. So if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, consider joining my Patreon. It helps me out a lot. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is just quickly create a fresh Airflow environment for us to use. So here we're just going to CD into desktop, go repos, and then make directory LLM pipeline. And then we're going to CD into LLM pipeline and then run astro dev init to create the basic folder structure for our Airflow environment. Then we're going to pop that folder open. So find it right here on pipeline and go to our requirements.txt file, which is our first place we're gonna to go, to just set a couple, or import a couple different packages that we will need. Um, so the packages are going to be pandas, OpenAI, um, so we can interact with the OpenAI provider and you know make those LLM calls, uh, and also the Pydantic provider package. Um, and if you don't know what Pydantic is, it's essentially a data validation library that you can define models in to re and then reuse them for verifying data um, and making sure that it actually conforms to the format that you expect. So we're using that for some more data validation here. Then you're also just going to want to make sure that you have two environment variables set. Um, which are going to be your open weather API keys. You can just go to open weather uh, and get this, and then also the open API key. Um, and this is just going to be two keys that you're gonna use for querying both the open weather API and the open AI API. Uh, obviously I won't include my own, but just really easy to set them here, and then they'll be referenced in the DAG as such. Speaking of the DAG, let's start building it. So here, create a new file called lmpipeline.py. Uh, and then we will import a whole laundry list of different packages and requirements that we're going to use here. Um, so first, we're going to import date time and time delta for interacting with you know, date time objects. Uh, we're going to import typing for a few, so that we have access to a few different types of variables. So dict, list, any, and optional. Um, we're also going to import JSON and logging. So JSON for interacting with API calls, logging for just actually logging and populating information to our logs files so we can easily pipe out the analysis. We're also going to uh, import, you know, enum class and data classes. So data class in enum, or well, data class will allow us to just basically create our own objects, which we're going to use for kind of storing context around data quality. And then enum is just a way to create uh, unique values. Uh, then we're going to import the Airflow DAG, task decorators, variable object, HTTP sensor for querying that API, Postgres operator and Postgres hook. We're going to use that as our backend database for saving this data and, and doing analysis. Uh, also importing the task group and trigger rule, Airflow exception and params so you can parameterize this DAG, use task groups to organize our tasks, have more advanced trigger rules, and also throw exceptions on certain failure conditions. Then we're also going to import pandas for data frame manipulation, requests for API manipulation, OpenAI for actually interacting with OpenAI, um, and then Pydantic for those data validation tasks that I talked about earlier. So then once we've imported all the different packages and requirements we're gonna need, we're then going to start creating a few different configurations and constants for us to use. Um, and creating them outside of the context of the DAG means it's gonna be a lot easier for us to make changes or reuse this across, across pipelines. Um, and it also gives us a way to say, hey, you know, this is the max retries and everything, so we don't have to define them every uh, all the time within the DAG. So first thing is data quality at Noom. So this is basically just taking a named constant value. So Noom is just a basically you know, constant that we're going to use for data quality status. And then we're going to store, hey, high, medium, low, or failed based on the data quality status of that particular data set. 
weather data config is the configuration for our weather data pipeline. So our API keys, cities, space URL, all the information we're going to need for actually interacting with that API uh, endpoint. And then we're also going to set some Pydantic models. So these Pydantic models basically allow us to set a data model for what we expect the data coming out of our you know, API to look like. So we expect it to have city, country, temperature, feels like, humidity, pressure, wind speed, weather description, timestamp. Uh, and then you can also add your own additional validators here, like validate humidity. So you can add additional va uh, validators if you'd like. But here we're just going to check as an example, hey, humidity always needs to be 0 and 100. Otherwise, we know there's some issue with that humidity field because you can't have 110% humidity and it's just raining. Um, then next thing we're going to do is define also a model for data analysis results. So this is a model that's going to allow us to store our LLM analysis results in a standardized formatted way also lets us pass this into AI and say, hey, give me an output in this defined format. Um, so you want to make sure when you're working with APIs and L or AI and LLM, you want to be very explicit about the output you want to get, and these classes really allow us to do that. Then we're going to import or put it set some default DAG arguments. Um, so here, just set default args to some pretty standard default args. Um, so here, just going to be owner data team. Uh, email and failure, retries, time, retry delay, just all very ba basic and non super important things. Um, and then where we start to get important is in our DAG definition. So here we're going to define a DAG uh, equals you know, weather data LLM pipeline with the, this is script, you know, really nothing out of the ordinary until we get to params. Uh, and here we're basically building a form that says, hey, you choose what you know cities you actually want to fetch weather data for. Um, you can choose whether you want a basic, comprehensive, or detailed analysis. Um, and you can enable if you want weather alerts or not. Um, and this is basically the goal of saying, hey, you know, if you're using an LLM for this type of tasks, what's because you don't have to define all the explicit logic for London or Tokyo or Sydney, you can actually just have the LLM figure out that logic on the fly, and that makes it a lot more flexible. Uh, in terms of, hey, I can just run this for a new city or I can run this for a new set of cities at any time without needing to change the structure of the DAG code. Uh, that's one of the big benefits you're getting here. So then, now that we define our DAG with some parameters that we're going to ingest, uh, we're then going to define our first task. Um, and here we're just going to define this task that is going to essentially just extract weather data from our open weather API. Um, so it's going to use connection pooling, retry logic, and validate the API responses. So here, creating a logger, getting an API key from Airflow variables, so that variable we set earlier, then using that to build with our con, uh, config. So here, you know, the config that we got earlier from our base URL of extract, you know, within here. Um, and then we're going to make that API request to that endpoint, to the weather data endpoint, raise for status, make sure, hey, this is actually able to successfully reach. And then it's going to take that data and save it in a JSON file, which we're then going to save within data. And then we're going to transform that into the more structured format. We're still going to keep the raw data for LLM analysis, but we want to make sure that this JSON is parsed into something a little more human readable and then return that human readable data set. Uh, and then we just have some basic error handling here if there's any errors. So we'll know if it's an API request failing to fetch weather data or if there's some kind of unexpected error there as well. Um, so that's really the importance of error handling there is, you know, you can say, hey, this is the exact type of error I got. This is how I'm going to troubleshoot it, right? It just shortens that time resolution. Then the next task we're going to define is a task that's actually going to analyze the data structure with an LLM. So here we're going to define this task, um, which is called analyze data structure with LLM. We're passing in that weather data, which is a list of dictionaries, to analyze that data structure. So here we're going to initialize an open API, API open AI client, then dump that data sample. So just take some of our weather data, dump it in that LLM, and then analyze that weather data structure to understand, hey, the summary of data structure, key fields, potential data types, potential data quality issues, suggestions for data cleaning, and basically just, you know, structuring, hey, this is LLM or open AI, this is what I want you to do. Go give me this information, this high level information around this data set so that I don't have to go in and understand it myself. Um, and then we're going to pipe that all into this chat completions.create. So this is the API endpoint for OpenAI, where we're going to say, hey, you have this system content. So giving them the context of your expert specializing weather data and then feeding in that prompt in as well. 
Um, and then you know, just saying, hey, max tokens, this is a great way to you know, limit your cost. Um, and the response format, we wanna get this in a standard JSON object instead of just a raw string, because then we can just say, hey, parse out the message content uh, and then load that into analysis and return that. Um, and if anything fails, then just raise an exception um, and return the default analysis if, that the L if the LLM fails for some reason. So then after we've used that LLM to actually understand, hey, what does this data look like? Uh, how, what can we do to clean it up? You know, is there any unnecessary data? Is there any you know, bad data here? We're then going to define a new task called clean and validate data. Um, where we're going to ingest that weather data alongside the LLM analysis and then clean and validate that data based on the LLM recommendations. And so this is where we're bringing in Pydantic for that data validation. Um, so here we're just creating two arrays, valid and invalid records, and then cleaning stats so we know what was clean and you know what actually occurred. You don't just want to bulk delete everything without any record. And then we're going to iterate through every record in weather data, um, remove the raw data because we don't want that for the validation because we just want the clean data here, and then apply any cleaning suggestions from that LLM analysis to say, hey, go do this operation to clean that data, right? Um, and then validate that those operations occurred successfully using the Pydantic model. Um, and you know, this is where you would say, hey, if X thing was in the suggestions, you, know, you can kind of fine tune this to say, what's the logic you want it to perform if any of these things occur? Um, then once you've validated that Pydantic model, you can then append those val valid records onto that validated data. Um, and then here again, we just have some logging in case anything fails before returning the valid data and the invalid data, as well as the cleaning stats for downstream operations. So now that we have our validated clean data ready for analysis, let's perform that analysis. So here we're gonna define our task for form LLM analysis that is going to take this data and start using it for actual analysis. Um, so here you'll see we have, you know, form analysis, creating an open AI client again, converting that data frame or that valid data into a data frame because it would be easier for analysis. Um, then preparing that analysis summary. So getting some averages, mean, max, uh, and then sit in the amount of cities analyzed. And then basically based on, you know, how the depth selected within that parameter. So basic, comp comprehensive, or detailed. It's then going to build a prompt saying analyze the following weather data summary with the summary stats, some sample records. It's then going to get the analysis depth. Uh, so choosing whether you want to comprehensive, basic, or uh, detailed. And then provide that analysis in JSON format. Give me the summary, list any patterns, list any anomalies, give me some recommendations and also a data quality store. And then this is going to be all pumped into the OpenAI client similar to how we did before, this time with a few more tokens because it is more of a complex process um, to say, hey, you're a meteorological data analysis, give me actionable insights based on this. Then we're going to then take that analysis, again, parse it out of that JSON, uh, validate that uh, analysis result via our data analysis result, uh, which we defined earlier, that class that's using Pydantic, um, and then saying if it's validated successfully, then returning that to a dictionary. So then once we're done with that, so we've got our analysis, we've got all that saved, we can then use that to send out alerts, right? So, you know, you don't want to actually have to be monitoring things actively, uh, you know, especially pipelines most of the time, you want to have alerts that are based on the analysis. So here we're going to set some conditional alert generation um, and say, hey, if there's no alerts, then, you know, return an empty frame. Um, then if, if alerts aren't able, then just return an empty frame, you know, break this off basically. Um, but otherwise, build an alert array, bring in that valid data, and then check for, you know, hey, is temperature above any of these uh, you know, values? And you can also add additional alerts here as well. Um, and then the LLM analysis used that to say, hey, have there been any anomalies detected? When you did the analysis, did you see anything super out of the normally, normally, normal? And if so, return that alert, right? So it return an alert that contains the information around that actual anomaly. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is store results. So here we're going to, you know, basically just get our valid data, the analysis result, any alerts that were that were generated, um, and then store our data within Postgres. Um, so you know, in production, you're probably just going to want to use a Postgres hook to actually do this. But here, I just wanted to kind of show, hey, this is what you can do: just return storage metadata with the high-level attributes, record store, analysis quality score, alert generated, storage timestamp. So basically, just dumping all of this back into whatever backend data analysis you're actually using tool. Um, then, finally, what we're also going to do here uh, is define a task group for data quality checks. 
Um, so here, in addition to our initial data quality checks, we're also going to check for data quality completeness. So say, hey, I want to check for total records, complete records, completeness ratio. Um, you have not enough records to complete, that's an issue. Also want to check data you know, consistency, data quality report, um, and just you know, additional steps, you know, saying, hey, I want to also, you know, not only am I, I want to use LLMs to actually generate the results, but also make sure you're validating them as well. Um, and then at the end, what we're going to do is just basically have a DAG definition body. So here, it's a bit of a weird uh, one, but essentially what we're going to do is say, hey, with DAG, and the reason we're doing this is because we need to pass data between this in kind of weird ways. Um, so here we're you know, bringing our config, our base URL, units, and then extracting the weather data for each city. Um, and this is basically just using what we had before to, or using the task like guy to pass data between all of our different tasks in a pretty linear way, right? So the only change here is that we're actually having our clean data and data quality group happen after that quality report in parallel to perform that LLM analysis, um, generating the alerts, storing the results of those alerts, um, and then defining any dependencies as well. Um, and you could sub out pieces of this. You, you could say, hey, I actually only want to, I don't want to save this in Postgres. The reason, that's the reason why I didn't show it is, you know, you could have this saved really anywhere. You could just populate this out to the log. You could take that analysis and just send it out in an email. Um, that part isn't really important. It's really the features up here that I want you to look about, which is, hey, you know, basically structuring LLMs into your pipelines to do that manual work for you. Um, so I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.